In movies and TV shows, characters are often shown being buried alive without major consequences. However, in reality, surviving being buried alive is extremely rare and can result in significant physical and mental damage. Some survivors require extensive physical therapy to regain the ability to walk, while others may suffer from speech difficulties due to lack of oxygen during their ordeal. Hearing first-hand accounts from survivors can provide insight into the terrifying experience of being buried alive. It's worth noting that in such situations, the initial response is likely to be a severe panic attack, which can rapidly deplete the limited air supply in a coffin, typically around 800 liters. Therefore, mastering controlled breathing techniques could prove indispensable in such unimaginable circumstances. Upon waking up in a coffin and realizing that you're likely facing death in a confined space, your natural instincts for self-preservation kick into overdrive. However, engaging in kicking, punching, or a combination of the two is a very bad idea, not only because it wastes precious air, but also because you risk overexerting your muscles, leading to faster exhaustion compared to staying calm. If you find yourself buried alive, there's a mix of both positive and negative outcomes. The upside is that your eyes will eventually adapt to see in the darkness. Conversely, the downside is that this adjustment occurs due to being trapped underground for an extended period, leaving your body with no choice but to adapt. In 2005, three Pakistani boys were trapped underground following an earthquake in their nearby town. Once rescued, the boys needed protection from sunlight as their eyes had become accustomed to the dark environment. In 2008, a Chinese builder was accidentally buried alive while working in a ditch in Ningbo City. He survived by controlling his breathing, but noted the intense heat after being rescued. He expressed concerns about the rising temperatures, considering that one's normal body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit would undoubtedly escalate during a situation like premature burial. One of the major hurdles faced by the Chilean miners who were trapped underground for 689 days was dehydration. During their time underground, they had to carefully ration 10 bottles of clean water among 25 men, resorting to sparingly drinking from contaminated water used to cool their machinery. Being in such a situation highlights the urgent need to secure a water source within a week, ideally sooner, when trapped underground for an extended period. Without access to water, dehydration is likely to be the cause of death before oxygen depletion. There are instances where one may feel as if they are in an extremely humid environment, such as a crowded club or a basement show where everyone's perspiration collectively adds to the moisture in the air. This peculiar yet universal occurrence can even happen in dire situations like being trapped inside a coffin, desperately yearning for escape. Remember these words of caution. Avoid skiing. Stay indoors and refrain from experiencing the wonders of the natural world. No? Well, Ultimate Ski explains the limited options available in the event of being buried under an avalanche. Contrary to portrayals in the media, the only way to survive being buried in the snow are to be rescued by someone or to patiently wait for the snow to thaw. Certainly, by the time you're buried alive, significant time will have passed. However, the good news is that recent statistics indicate that 92% of fully buried individuals can be revived if rescued within the initial 15 minutes. The duration you have before succumbing after being buried alive hinges on the amount of air at your disposal. Thankfully, popular science has calculated this. In a standard coffin, you have 820 liters of air available until you deplete it and fill your enclosure with carbon dioxide. By breathing shallowly, you might manage approximately five and a half hours inside a coffin. Even if you successfully retain your breath long enough to break free from the coffin, the harsh reality awaits outside. Chances are high that your grave has been covered by six feet of dense soil that restricts your chest from expanding when the pressure weighs down on you. Moreover, as you strive to emerge from beneath the soil, your ribs are likely to be crushed in the process. The following situation might seem unpleasant. Imagine managing to pry open the lid of your coffin, bringing you one step closer to freedom. The next challenge in this daunting scenario is confronting six feet of tightly packed dirt, which not only presses down on your chest, 
but also fills your mouth and nostrils with soil, cutting off your airflow and potentially leaving you with the taste of cemetery dirt as your final sensation. According to Anthony Britton, a man who voluntarily buried himself alive, it's pitch black and the dampness is overwhelming. The soil is up your nose, in your mouth, in your eyes. In his attempt to recreate one of Harry Houdini's famous escapes, Anthony Britton, the escapologist, was surprised to find the experience very uncomfortable. At one point during his experiment, he realized that the soil's density had trapped him in a position that could have been his final resting place. He said, I think the soil shifted or something, and I got my right arm trapped. It was trapped between my body and the actual soil itself, so at that point it was, crikey, I can't move my right arm. Rest assured, if you find yourself buried alive, you'll not be conscious throughout the ordeal. In the event of premature burial in a coffin or sealed room, the accumulation of carbon dioxide from your exhalations will eventually fill the space and gently lull you into sleep, akin to the effects of sitting in a vehicle with a garden hose attached to the exhaust pipe, something else that is not recommended. Over time, your lungs will become filled with carbon dioxide, leading you to eternal slumber. Despite having good air and moderately drinkable water, the potential threat to the Chilean miners stemmed from the absence of a restroom. Due to space constraints, the miners resorted to using a seldom-visited area as their makeshift toilet. However, even with this precaution, the large number of miners in the confined space increased the risks of dysentery and rectal tenesmus. If trapped under debris for an extended period, rescue efforts could prove more fatal than the initial entrapment. As per Dr. Tejri Shah of Medicines Sans Fronteras, prolonged compression of a body results in sudden release of pressure, causing a surge of toxins from muscle breakdown that can be deadly. This leads to kidney injuries and shock, causing excruciating pain and posing a significant risk of renal failure without immediate medical intervention. Instances of crush syndrome are exceedingly uncommon, as most individuals do not survive the two-week threshold required for sufficient tissue damage to trigger its onset. In the 18th and 19th centuries, it was often challenging to confirm if someone had died, leading to numerous cases of individuals being buried alive. Many of these unfortunate premature burials resulted in individuals descending into madness and desperately banging their heads against the coffin lid in a desperate attempt to either end their suffering or break free from the coffin. Regardless of the course of action, it was an unbearable predicament to endure. Even if one were buried in a shallow grave and managed to dig themselves out, the situation remained dire. A woman in England, buried alive by her boyfriend in July 2016, miraculously escaped but spent the following 14 days in a medically induced coma. Her injuries were so profound that she required a cane for mobility in the foreseeable future. Having survived the harrowing ordeal of being buried alive, whether in a coffin, a mine, or under sand, one could expect to grapple with years of post-traumatic stress. Reflecting on the experiences of the Chilean miners, journalist Jonathan Franklin noted, psychologically, Many miners would assert, I'm returning to mining, I'm tough, I'm a miner. However, one recalled lasting only two minutes underground before feeling such intense fear that he became dizzy and fled the mine. Another miner, upon gazing at the mine's entrance, found himself in tears. <laughs> 